Okay, we're going to do the statistics questions one and two, and let's just start. They say there's 19 grade 11 math test scores, and you have to put them in order from smallest to biggest. I cheated and put it in Excel, and here they are in order, with 30 being the minimum, 96 being the maximum. There's 19 numbers. And, okay, so if there's 19 numbers, that means that the 10th number must be the median. This number right there, 63. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 smaller, 9 bigger, and 63, the 10th number, is the median. The middle of the bottom half is 51. That's right there. That's the first quartile. The middle of the top half, 9 numbers, is 78. Right in the middle of 9 is the, the fifth number right there, 50, uh, 78. Don't need formulas. You can just look at it. The middle of the top is Q3, the middle of the bottom Q1, and the median. Then it's time to make a box and whisker graph for five marks. So there's the median, 63. There's the minimum, 30. There's the maximum, 96. 96. You just, I think this is going to be given, this is, was given to you, the scale here. And then I put the 51, the first quartile, the third quartile, which is 78, it would look like it's right there, and the medium goes right in there. So your box and your whisker looks like it's skewed to the right slightly. Then they ask this question, what percentage of the scores is within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, there's the mean plus a standard deviation, that's 81.3. There's the mean minus a standard deviation, that's 45.76. I think one of the questions was calculate the, I better check it here. They did say calculate the standard deviation. You just put those numbers in your calculator, go shift stat and hit the right buttons and you get 17.77 as the standard deviation. You also need to know the mean, which is 63.53. You'll get two marks for finding the upper boundary and the lower boundary. Standard, uh, a, mean plus a standard deviation and a mean minus a standard deviation. Then you just count how many numbers fit between 81, a little bit bigger than 81, and 45.76 would fit in here. How many numbers is that? I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I count, I think, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Out of 19, that's 63.16%. The next question is very standard. It says the commutative frequency. So all you do is go 32 plus 68 is 100. 100 plus 130 is 230. 230 plus 42 is 272. And everything added up, added eight more, you get 280. There's the easiest two marks in the exam. Then you take five and graph it to 32. You'll have a graph like this. 5 gets graphed to 32. 10 gets graphed uh, to 100. Um, 15 gets uh, graphed to 230. 20 gets graphed to 272. And 25 gets graphed to 280, right at the end. The end points here get graphed to the commutative frequencies. And then you connect it in your best S curve. I had to do it with the... Uh, Mimeo pad, so it's not so beautiful, but that's it. There's your S curve. There's your uh, Ogive graph. Now, the next question says, how many people, estimate how many people have been uh, away for more than 17 days? We'll go to 17 on the bottom. That's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Go to 17. Go up to your curve and go over. I think it's about 58. Well, 280 minus 58, it looks like 22 people have been absent for more se than 17 days. Then, Estimate the median. Well, there's 280. Just go to the middle of 280. It's 140. Then run over and run down. My estimated median is 12 days. And there you go. Question one and two done.